Good evening, my lords, ladies and gentlemen. I say that in case there are any lords in the, in the house this evening. I haven't checked whether there are. But you're all very welcome. What an incredible game cricket is, isn't that? Just quickly underline it, especially when it's played in the right spirit. And that uh, little film is being shown in school assemblies this year, possibly up to 4,000 of the schools who are involved in the uh, Chance to Shine campaign. So uh, if that doesn't inspire them, nothing will. Um, well, actually, something will. That's playing the game, of course. Um, after our lecture this evening, uh, we're going to have a panel, as usual. And as usual, it's very kindly and generously being chaired by Mark Nicholas, no one better. And he will have with him uh, four very distinguished people, Kumar Sangakara himself, Michael Holding, Andrew Strauss, and on the eve of a one-day international between England ladies and Australia ladies, here at Lord's tomorrow, uh, Claire Connor, the former England captain. Uh, so welcome to all of them, and thank you all for coming. But above all, thank you to Kumar Sangakara for accepting our invitation to speak this evening. Uh, a cricketer truly fabled in his own career, which is pretty rare. Uh, I think the <clears throat> Sangakara cover drive will go down with the Wally Hammond cover drive. Uh, he will be remembered long after he stopped playing with great affection uh, and admiration. 97 test matches at the moment, 8,400 and 28 runs at an average of 56, 25 hundreds, including that one very recently at the Rose Bowl, uh, which saved the day for Sri Lanka and put right one of the few blots on his uh, escutcheon. No hundred hitherto in England. 163 catches and 20 stumpings in test cricket. And in his 286 one-day internationals, 8,978 runs, 11 hundreds, 60 fifties, 282 catches and 72 stumpings. Is there any uh, thing he hasn't done, you might wonder? Uh, and actually, there is one thing missing, because in his proud record, he has not, in 68 balls in test cricket, taken a single wicket. <laughs> He has a best bowling analysis of none for four. Um, which reminds me of an ambidextrous cricketer that I used to play with because Kumar bowls right-handed. Perhaps you should try left-handed, actually, Kumar. Uh, but he was a remarkable chap as he used to play cricket in the West Surrey region. And I saw him score a brilliant hundred as a left-hander one Saturday, and then about a month later, he turned up and played right-handed and got another 100, which was absolutely astonishing. And in the bar afterwards, I asked him uh, how it was he decided which way round he was going to bat. And he said, well, it's quite simple. If I wake up on a Saturday morning and my wife is lying on her right-hand side, I bat right-handed. If she's right, <laughs> lying on her left, I bat left. And I said, well, what do you do if she happens to be lying on her back? And he said, well, then I have to ring up the captain and say I'm not available. <laughs> I want, to, um, I want to give a special welcome also this evening to all those members of the Cowdery family uh, who are here because uh, this is uh, happily the Cowdery lecture uh, in memory of one of England's greatest cricketers. And Chris and Crystal uh, are here this evening with their sons Fabian and Julian, both members of the current Tunbridge 11 and the entire Tunbridge 11 is here this evening, uh, playing MCC tomorrow. Uh, and I understand that their coach has instructed that they must be in bed by 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, we've also got Jeremy here, another of Colin's sons, with Robert and Charlie, and Carol, his daughter, with Jamie and Lucy, and possibly Keith. I've got that in, a, in a brackets. But all the Cowdery family are, needless to say, 
very specially warmly welcomed. Um, and actually, July was the month that in 1946, Colin Cowdery came here as a 13-year-old boy playing for his school against Clifton, scored 75 and 44, took three wickets in the first innings, and in the second, on a thrill, in a thrilling match, took five for 59, and uh, his school side won by two runs. Uh, that's the stuff of uh, dreams. Uh, and one man who's lived out his schoolboy dreams and a bit more is our very uh, honoured guest, an honourable guest this evening, Kumar Sangakara. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for that introduction. Um, about my bowling, all I would say is that the captain lost his faith in my ability when I bowled my first delivery in goal and hit second slip on his shin. <laughs> Mr. President, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I wish to sincerely thank the MCC for giving me the opportunity and the great honor of delivering the 2011 Cowdery Lecture. I was in India after the World Cup when my manager called to pass on the message that CMJ was trying to get in touch with me to see whether I would like to deliver this year's lecture. I was initially hesitant given the fact that we would be in the midst of the current ODI series, but after some reflection, I realized that it was an invitation I should not turn down. To be the first Sri Lankan to be invited was not only a great honor for me, but also for my countrymen. Then I had to choose my topic. I suspect many of you might have anticipated that I picked one of the many topics being energetically debated today, the role of technology, the governance of the game, the future of test cricket, and the curse of corruption especially spot fixing. All of the above are important, and no doubt, Sir Colin Cowdery, a cricketing legend with a deep affection for the game, would have strong opinions about them all. For the record, I do too. I strongly believe that we have reached a critical juncture in the game's history, and that unless we better sustain test cricket, embrace technology enthusiastically, protect the game's global governance from narrow self-interest and more aggressively root out corruption than cricket will face an uncertain future. But while these would all be interesting topics, deep down inside me, I wanted to share with you a story. The story of Sri Lanka's cricket, a journey that I'm sure Colin would have enjoyed greatly because I don't believe any cricket playing nation in the world today better highlights the potential of cricket to be more than just a game. This lecture is all about the spirit of the game. And in this regard, the story of Sri Lankan cricket is fascinating. Cricket in Sri Lanka is no longer just a sport. It is a shared passion that is a source of fun and a force for unity. It is a treasured sport that occupies a celebrated place in our society. It is remarkable that in a very short period, an alien game has become a national obsession, played and followed with almost fanatical passion and love, a game that brings the nation to a standstill, a sport so powerful it is capable of transcending war and petty politics. I therefore decided that tonight, I would like to talk about the spirit of Sri Lankan cricket. Ladies and gentlemen, the history of my country extends over 2,500 years. A beautiful island, rich in natural resources, it is situated in an advantageously strategic position in the Indian Ocean.